The Love Dare book, which is what Caleb Holt goes through when he's in the movie, um, is twofold. It teaches every day he's studying what unconditional love is, but secondly, he's being dared to demonstrate love and do practical things to lead his heart and invest back into the relationship with his wife. And so we are writing the book right now, my brother and I, Alex, uh, are writing it. It's going to be released in January with Brahmin Home Publishers. We're really excited about that. And uh, so that when the DVD comes out, there'll be a tangible tool that when people see the movie on DVD, they'll be able to go and get and hopefully invest back into their relationship with their wife. And so, uh, but big picture is Jesus said, your heart follows your investment. He said, lay up treasures in heaven. And he said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so we are applying that to a marriage relationship. Invest in the relationship and, uh, and let your heart, you know, follow back into in, you know, appreciating and valuing your spouse. And so, um, but at the same time, finding God as the source of true love. Because First John says that uh, no one can love apart from God. And as Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you, a husband is supposed to follow that example. So he should be able to look at his wife and say, as the Father has loved, is loving me and filling up my love tank, I am pouring that out back on you. Well, I would say that um, ultimately, uh, Stephen was, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, is that what a couple needs to do above all else is learn to line themselves up under the Word of God and begin building your life together, uh, both individually and as a couple, on the solid Word of God and trust God, uh, have faith in God, believe His Word, uh, and be willing to do what it says no matter how you feel at the time. Um, so in other words, just don't let your feelings lead you mm -hmm. and you'll find yourself falling in and out of love and uh, all of that, but decide that you're going to live in obedience to the Word of God and build your life that way and trust Him in His promises and obey His commands and God promises a good result. Well, and Scripture says you cannot do anything against the Word, you can only do something for the Word. And for you, Shannon, if you... Um, it will be proven to be true. If you disobey the word of God, you will experience the consequences. And Jesus said your life will, when all the wind and the storms and the rain hit your life, if you're not obeying God's word, you're going to crumble and fall your house, your marriage, or whatever. You can right. apply that. But he says if you obey the word of God, then it's going to be built on the rock. And I can look at each area of my life and the areas that are built on the word. If I'm building my finances on what does God's word say about money and how do I need to build my you know, life on obedience to that, those areas of my life I can see are built on the rock. If communicating in how I treat my wife, if I'm obeying what God's Word says about how I treat my wife, that area is specifically built on the rock. And so the more that you and your wife can do that, here's what will happen. Instead of it being your opinion and your background, this is what mom always did, compared to her opinion, now it's we're both laying aside, we're learning from the past, but we're both laying aside our desires and agenda, and we're going and saying, God, what is your standard? What do we need to be doing here? And then both of you come together and are united in obeying the Word you will be built on the rock in each of those areas. But the second thing is this, and this is what I, I would want to hear if I was sitting in your shoes. You don't get married to find happiness. That's The world has that mentality. Oh, this person's going to make me happy. Well, if God is not your source of happiness and He's not filling up your love tank and making you happy, your wife ain't going to be able to do it because she can't do something that only God can do. And so we tell people, find your contentment in Christ daily, every day. Let him fill up your love tank, not your wife. And then you bring that contentment and love as a gift to your marriage rather than coming in as a sponge to suck it out of somebody else who doesn't have the ability to give it to you. And so every day, I need it, and I, my wife and I talk about this, every day, you know, I have to let the Lord fill up my love tank, not her. And then it flops. Instead of me coming in and trying to be loved by her, I'm doing what Jesus did, and I'm coming in with my heart filled up with the love of God, and I'm living out of love for her. And it changes how I speak to her, it changes how I treat her, because I'm living out of love rather than trying to be loved by her. Why aren't you making me happy? You know? Well, she's not going to be able to make you happy. And when you, when you realize that you're not going to be able to make her happy either, oh, it takes that load off your shoulders. Don't put that expectation on yourself. She needs to know, my, my husband's not going to make me happy. I, that's something the Lord has reserved for himself to be able to do for me on a daily basis. That is a huge transition to your thinking because then you're not constantly disappointed in your wife because she's not making me happy, you know? Leave and that sometimes one of, the hardest, it's one, of the, one of the hardest times to really 
connect with the reality that is when you're in this euphoric state of uh, dating each other and courting. Right. Oh yeah, you're happy. You do make me happy, sweetheart. Yeah, you oh, always yeah. make me happy. And you have the potential to bless your spouse for the rest of your life, but you have a soul that can only stay alive and be filled by God. And so, uh, what's the well, and that's a line right? in the movie is when the father looks at the son, he says, "You can't give her what you don't have." And Caleb is. It's kind of like the light bulb goes on for him because he's trying to love his wife and he doesn't even have a relationship with God. You know, he's not letting God fill up his heart. And that's a, that's a strong message for this generation. They are thinking, I'm going to marry this person, they're going to make me happy. 